Hi everyone, welcome to Curiosity the Science Show presented by Young Academy of India. This is the episode number 40. Let's see what moved the world of science is in the last month, right? And also what to look forward in the next month, that is the February. February is the month of science here in India at least, right? This is, the, this is when our National Science Week as well as Science Day falls on. That's on 28th of February. And 28th of Feb is also the foundation day of the workplace, the, the university where I work for, that is Central University of Punjab here in India. February is the purest month, you can say, at least linguistically speaking. Februam, the word, uh, the February comes from. Uh, that means purification in Latin. Did you know that? I'm not sure. Did I know that? No. I just looked up and I found it. Purification that happens, the ritualistic purification that happens in, uh, you know, the first uh, full moon of this month. So full moon of February, uh, this year falls on 5th and uh, a February full moon has a name. It's called snow moon. You know, the full moon emits the snow covered the landscapes, right? Yes. And yes, it's, uh, it's going to be non-leap year. This time we are going to have only 28 uh, days of this month. And the next leap year is in the next year, 2024, we are going to have an additional day. So the major uh, news happened in, uh, in January 2023. The first month is uh, uh, one of the major news which I featured in this month's episode's cover page is the carving out of a massive, uh, you know, iceberg. That is a tabular iceberg. The, the size of the iceberg is around 15, 50 kilometers square. You know square kilometer and it's called chasm one from the brunt ice shelf which is very near to the british antarctic station called halley and uh, around 20 kilometers you know fortunately all 21 occupants of the halley station are all safe you know and uh, they basically they moved a little bit further a few years back and thanks for that and they're not part of this broken ice shelf okay uh, yes yeah, so that is uh, it's really massive so the the, the uh, you know 15 50 square kilometer is approximately the the size of greater london metropolitan area you can imagine how big how massive this one is right coming to the major research paper which i really liked and appreciated published recently the first one is that working fever awards is associated with higher life satisfaction according to this new research and uh, of course when you have a life life is better right but when your life is work you know uh, then life is bitter unfortunately you know the, when the life is the work so basically if you if you define your life or if you uh, uh, you know if you pertain your work as identity of yourself then it's going to be really tricky for you that is what this new study says Second story is that the adults who stay well hydrated appear to be healthier, develop fever chronic conditions such as heart lung disease, heart and lung disease, live longer than those who may not get that sufficient fluid. So yet another reason for staying hydrated. Well, it's expected, isn't it? Fluid out that when you urinate is the body's main mechanism to get rid of whatever uh, the waste minerals and waste stuff that the body produces, right? So it's really important. The detoxification, you can say, but most of this detoxification is uh, pseudoscience, by the way. But hydration is extremely important. And if you drink, this is what the study says, is about longevity connection with the hydration. That is pretty interesting, isn't it? And also, of course, you will not get that kidney stone. The likelihood of developing kidney stone is much lesser if you stay hydrated, right? Third story is about abortion. Abortion associated with lower psychological distress. Uh, if, if you compare with both adoption and unwanted birth. So unwanted birth as well as adoption gives more psychological stress, unfortunately. If you compare that with abortion. Pretty interesting, isn't it? Next story is that the workers are less likely to go on strike in recent decades. If you compare with uh, a few decades earlier. The reason is that they will be in debt and they fear losing their jobs. You no, know, unfortunately, workers don't have much of the choice. Maybe these are all 
pre-planned execution of the capitalistic mentality you know that is pretty interesting and the study examined the cases in japan korea sweden and the united states and uk over the period of 70 till 2018 all these are capitalistic economies you know fifth story is a 63 percentage severe alcoholics exhibit significant cognitive improvements within 18 days of abstinence if you quit drinking within 18 days you can expect significant improvements in your cognitive function yet another reason to stay abstinent you know practice abstinence uh, to completely quit drinking right next story is that the people living in rural areas were even less likely to get enough exercise that is startling observation though the study happened in uh, in the us you know so people in the metropolitan areas or uh, cities at least uh, uh, do exercise better than those who are living in uh, you know villages very startling right yes yeah, so uh, yeah yeah so uh, you know the cities 28 percentage of the population had adequate uh, fitness you know uh, they, they, they practice that exercise at the same time only 16 percentage of the people outside the cities do have this aerobic as well as muscle strengthening activities that is the resistance training next story lab ground retinal eyes cells that make successful connections open door for clinical trials to treat blindness so science is now looking for how to treat the blindness a complete blindness by a lab grown retinal cells that have this uh, retinal uh, neuronal connection that is pretty interesting isn't it? this story i really appreciate it okay so the next story is the uh, you know circumcision that is the male genital mutilation which i would like to say so earlier before this study published uh, you know us had this uh, you know funding of this uh, male circumcision in uh, in africa uh, to counteract the hiv transmission so the belief is that if you are circumcised uh, you know the surface area of the glands is much lesser i mean the uh, you know uh, the skin is much lesser during the male female contact during the intercourse and therefore circumcised men have lower chance of getting hiv but that is a myth there is no science behind it that is what this new study says that the circumcision is not associated with reduced pre prevalence of the hiv in african males you know and apparently 6th of february is also international day of zero tolerance to female genital mutilation well un has declared fgm that is a female genital mutilation as unethical at the same time un didn't consider about the male genetic mutilation as unethical because of the religious uh, constraints involved you see of course it is unethical especially if you're doing the circumcision on uh, you know on uh, uh, small children right without their consent how can you play with their body part at least that is what i feel now next study the ninth story is that the people who found themselves good looking showed less willingness to continue wearing face mask so face mask wearing wearing the tendency has something to do with how good you look so people who look very beautiful want to get rid of the face mask that is alarming isn't it of course the face mask is really important you know and not just the covid 19 but also for any of these airborne uh, you know infections you can curtail by wearing face masks next story if you drink coffee like me i'm a big coffee drinker i'm also love tea uh, the new story published in sweden that says that if you mix milk with the tea that is extremely good for uh, fighting the inflammation especially bowel inflammation you know so the reason is that the milk has got amino acids so amino acids binds with polyphenols in coffee as well as tea of course the polyphenols are there to those this particular paper didn't say anything about the tea but if you mix it then that you know that mixing almost doubles the inflammation resistance potential you know that is very very interesting another reason to add milk in the tea or coffee that you drink very interesting isn't it 11th a new study cast doubt on the oxytocin's role as love hormone so it's you know that this particular study 
looked at the love hormone in in chimpanzees and other apes and what they found is that it's not really a necessity or necessary precaution for bonding you know so even without oxytocin the bonding happens and uh, you know all the uh, uh, whatever be the love right the feelings of love can develop without this particular hormone so it's incorrect to attribute that the love or mating with this particular hormone the oxytocin right so that is only uh, it's not an essential element that is what the study says very interesting isn't it next recent research suggests that rats may not have spread the critical role or, or played the critical role in keeping the plague going in the europe so the pubonic plague right so the black death is usually attributed to uh, the rats right rats as vector for this bubonic plague uh, spread by Yersinia pestis, the bacterium that causes the plague, isn't it? Uh, that happened between 1347 till uh, 1353, you know, the Black Death happened during that time. But at the same time, plague, if you really look only the bubonic plague that continued, the outbreaks in the Europe continued until 19th century. So the Black Death, it's incorrect to say it's all because of these uh, rats. Rats are the spread. Maybe it has something to do with the climate as well, right? various other dimensions to be considered. 13th story, the New Zealand southern waters are experiencing marine heat waves with 4 degrees Celsius above normal. That's really alarming. New Zealand southern uh, islands, New Zealand itself is pretty cold and the south of New Zealand is really cold and those cold regions are experiencing massive heat waves, 4 degrees Celsius higher due to the climate change you know so that is really alarming next large study finds that the peer reviewers award higher marks when the papers co uh, papers authors or co-authors are famous you know so just 10 percentage of reviewers of a test paper recommended for the acceptance when the sole author was obscure you know if the authors are not well known uh, they they you know the reviewers come in to reject this paper at the same time if one of the author is a nobel prize winner then 59 percentage endorsed the same manuscript to be accepted look at that so the problem here is that many of these journals do not follow the gold standard protocol of peer reviewing that is double blind reviewers should not know who the authors are and authors are also should not know who the reviewers are Right? But if the reviewers know the, who the authors are, that is not double blind. It's called single blind. That is the problem with this. You know, this approach needs to be changed. Next, Viagra, uh, you know, the, the common drug for the blue pill for the erectile dysfunction. Uh, Viagra lowers the risk of heart disease in men up to 39%. That is what it says. So it is Viagra for longevity. Pretty interesting study, isn't it? But by the way, if you look at the Viagra or, uh, uh, you know, the uh, nitric oxide, right? Uh, Sidenafil, isn't it? So that particular drug developed for heart ailment, not for erectile dysfunction. Okay, so it is very interesting study that it lowers the risk up to 39 percentage. Okay, and uh, men who take the drug also appear less likely to suffer early death from any cause it's a large sample study 70,000 uh, cohorts adult men with average age of 52 and all of whom had erectile dysfunction diagnosis at some point in their life so that is a very interesting study by the way please check the show notes of this video uh, just click and open the show notes section uh, you know uh, and check there is a link uh, of uh, you know link to my blog and the blog enlist every single study if you click on those study you can it will take you to that paper please read it to to dwell more for the curious audiences like you right next today next story of the week is the uh you know belief in paranormal and metaphysical concepts are linked with poor sleep quality you know what these paranormal and metaphysical concept including soul if you believe in soul or, or mind you know living on after the death so post death the soul remains right especially most of the religious books say about the soul so if you believe in it chances are high that you won't get 
uh, adequate sleep. You know, it affects the sleep. Very interesting, right? And other paranormal uh, concept that the study dwelt upon include ghost, believe in ghost, demons, communication with the dead, near death experiences as evidence for an afterlife, and aliens having visited the earth. These are all associated with poor quality sleep. Something all of us needs to introspect. Do we believe in any of these paranormal concepts or not? 17th story. About 73% of the drugs advertised on the TV are of low therapeutic value. So, it, again, it's kind of common sense, right? The company is spending massive amounts for TV advertisement, right? Uh, why they need to go for a TV advertisement? Because people are not aware of those drugs. Basically, the drugs doesn't work that good. And that is the reason they are spending too much money on the advertisement, you know? So, some of the very, very potential drugs, you will hardly see a 73%, I mean, uh, this uh, TV advertisement, for instance, aspirin, you know, aspirin, uh, it's, it's a very well uh, uh, documented the efficiency of this aspirin as anti-inflammatory or antipyretic or, you know, for headache or even for preventing cardiovascular diseases, you know, but you will not see the aspirins ad in TV. Aspirin is also super inexpensive, just 4 rupees per 14 tablet strip, you know. So, who will want to, who want to advertise in the TV, isn't it? So, this is startling. 73% of these advertised drugs are of low therapeutic value. So, yeah, beware of that. Next time you, you decide yourself to purchase something that you saw the ad in the TV, ask yourself how good the evidence is. 18th story, you can reduce the risk of early death by nearly 20% just by eating more food from your choice of four healthy eating pattern. So it's kind of complicated, but what the study says is that if you in increase whole grains as well as fruits, vegetable, nuts and legume in various combinations, that is what the four dietary regimes are all about. So all these four regimes share this commonality. Right. For instance, Mediterranean diet or DASH diet, very, very common diet. All these extremely important diets do have these commonality that they contain legumes, nuts, vegetables, fruits and whole grains. You know, so it doesn't mean that the healthy diet is boring. No, you have got multiple options. You know, for instance, you can go to a Mediterranean restaurant and if you're kind of bored, you can go to a Japanese restaurant. Or Caribbean restaurant, you know, so all these restaurants seemingly if, if they are following this, you know, whole grains based uh, diet, it drastically reduce the risk of early death, you know, and uh, especially the, you know, the legumes, uh, including peanuts, chickpea, kidney bean, green peas, cow pea, black bean, soybean, lentils, black eyed peas, these are really essential, uh, you know, in uh, Hispanic race in the US as well as the Hispaniola, right? Uh, the uh, Central and South American diet do feature a lot of legumes in their diet. And that is the reason for the Hispanic paradox that they, they, they live longer and they are less prone for uh, lung diseases. That's very interesting, like COPD. Fantastic, you know. And apparently on this 10th of February is also World Pulses Day. Another reason to increase pulses intake, legume intake in our diet. Nineteenth story is that the US college attendance appears to politicize the students. Per analysis of surveys since 1974, with female students in particular becoming more liberal through attending the college. Not good news for conservatives. You know, so conservatives want more votes. And if you educate the, the people, uh, especially the females, they tend to become more and more liberal. Startling observation, right? Let this paper won't stop funding for education by the conservative Republicans in case Republicans win back the election. And it's those studies about the US, uh, I expect quite similar patterns elsewhere in the world as well. You know. Now, final story of this month's curiosity is that the humans still have genes for full coat of body hair or fur 
whatever the name you call it, like a cat's fur, dog's fur, we still have those genes. Though those genes are not functional genes, there is some crucial mutations that, you know, that made these genes dysfunctional, something called protogenes, you know. So these genes are muted state in our genome. So these are relics of our uh, past, uh, you know, uh, of our legacy with having fur. You know, we had fur at one point in our early uh, evolutionary legacy, but then we lost it. So, you know, so that is, that's very interesting, isn't it? Vestigial structure like this, these are vestigial genes have been identified by this landmark study. Do subscribe to our Facebook group. We have approximately 6,000 members in our group. Do subscribe, the link is also in the show notes. Check it out, right? Coming next part of this curiosity is observances. So February 1st till 5th, return of Comet C 2022 E3. That is the green comet. You know, after really long time, we are going to see this particular green comet back in the beginning of February. You know, um, so 1st till 5th, look out, watch out for this comet. So last time we saw this comet is way 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 back during the time of dinosaurs when dinosaurs roamed humans didn't even exist you know so that is very interesting right so you can see this comet now it's being part of this terrific uh, you know the cosmic history right so check it out second fab is the world wetlands day 13th is world radio day 22nd is a moon venus conjunction you know, in the same frame, you will see Moon as well as Venus together. It doesn't mean that it's one on the top of another. It's just that in one frame, it both comes together. It's very, very close by in our, you know, eyesight. So 23rd is Moon-Mars conjunction. 26th is a, uh, it's a launch that we are looking forward to. That launch is by SpaceX. Falcon 9. It's a sixth launch, you know. A Falcon 9 rocket carrying this Crew Dragon spaceship with four astronauts, you know, so uh, Elon Musk, the SpaceX, right? So it's it's now, uh, yeah, the launch is now nearing on 26th. Of course, there are so many other launches too, especially the JAXA is planning another launch, though it doesn't have any cosmonauts in it, astronauts and for, of course, the Japan, Jap Japanese follow the American style, right? Uh, yeah, so this one, 26th launch is pretty interesting 28th is another conjunction this time it's moon mars conjunction and as i told you earlier 28th is also our national science day as well as our foundation day right so many things are falling on 28th of feb so there are large number of opportunities for students as well as young researchers including new grand core by ignite life science foundation fab 15 is the deadline for this ignite acon amr fast grants you know uh, dst india with eu european union joint call is open now the the last date is 29th march australia india strategic research fund scheme is also open for collaborative research projects round 15 15th call and the um, deadline is 15th March. Call for proposals under Curie program to support the women's PG colleges in India. So in case you are from a women's PG college, a postgraduate college, you may appear for this Curie funding program, okay, to support your, uh, you know, the, the college, the education as well as research. Okay, the 28th Feb is the deadline. And uh, call for project proposal under strengthening upscaling, nurturing, innovations for livelihood. Abbreviation is called SUNIL, S-U-N-I-L, program of the DST. Again, that call is open now and the deadline is 6th February. And this morning when I checked the government scholarship called the education, right? Uh, Ministry of Education site, the scholarship site, Czech, Czech Republic and Israel government scholarship schemes are open now for, uh, you know, uh, prospective candidates to try for PhD in these countries, Israel as well as Czechoslovak, uh, Czech Republic, sorry, sorry, uh, Czech Republic, right? Czechoslovakia, by the way, is the older name of the Czech Republic, right? Czech and Slovenia and Slovakia were all together one country, but now it is all separate countries. 
so before going my the the latest book uh, the life skills is still available on sale and uh, a re a reduced mrp only 435 including the postage uh, you may please order the the link is in the show notes of this video and also do check out the young academy of india's facebook page for more exciting curiosity driven uh, stories as well as opportunities for the students okay so i wish you all a very productive and uh, happy and healthy february uh, the month of science the month for the curiosity to everybody see you soon in yet another episode of curiosity after a month goodbye